Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Tech Gamers World. Hurricane Ian is fast approaching the west coast of Florida, so you know what that means. It's time for some virtual hurricane hunting in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's hop in our F-18, take off from Tampa International Airport, and head southwest into the Gulf of Mexico to see if we can find the eye of Hurricane Ian. Stay tuned and let's do this. Okay, everyone, so here we go. So the first thing we need to do to get to Hurricane Ian is create a flight plan. So let's go ahead and go into world map. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on Florida. So as we all know, that's where the hurricane's headed. So we'll start out in Tampa. Zoom in here, we're gonna select, uh, let's do 19R facing south. That's our departure. Now we want to set our arrival as the approximate area in the eye of the hurricane. So we're going to set as arrival. Now we don't need it to be perfect. And we're going to fly in an F-18 Super Hornet. So we'll get there very quickly. And it'll be fun. So like I said, Hurricane Ian is currently tracking north east towards Florida, the west coast of Florida. Florida, the west coast of Florida has not had a direct hit from a hurricane in a very long time. All right, so here we are at Tampa Airport on runway 19R facing south. All right, we are ready to fly. So the weather is set for real time. And as we can see, there already is starting to be considerable cloud cover. And this hurricane is still really far away. So we're gonna go ahead and release the parking brake, apply full throttle, and we're gonna go ahead and turn on the afterburner. And we are on our way, passing 100 knots. And we're at V1, so let's rotate. We are airborne. Gear up. Flaps up. They say to maintain 70% throttle. I'm going to keep it at 100% with afterburner on because I want to. So we're going to head basically towards the south southwest, right towards the destination that I set up in the flight plan. And when we get there, we should hit the eye of the storm. Again, the destination I set was approximate, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Right now, things are calm, and that should change in a little while. I'm sure we're gonna get some pretty nice views as we get closer to the storm. I am recording this in real time, so you'll see me moving around and uh, taking pictures, angles, screenshots, stuff like that. I'm going to try and see if I can get above the cloud cover while we're on our way to the eye of the storm. I don't know if that's going to be possible, though. Depends how high this storm is. I bet you the ceiling is pretty low. The ceiling is defined as the uh, cloud cover from the ground. We're at 8,000, 9,000 feet. Heading at about 570 knots. Off to the left you can see Thompson Airfield. 
as we are heading off the coast of Florida. Passing over the Sunshine Bridge down below us there. St. Petersburg area. I actually grew up uh, spending a lot of time in western Florida. Um, my grandparents used to have a house in Venice that I would spend a considerable amount of time at over the summers. And I don't ever remember there being a direct hit from a hurricane. I don't believe there ever was one. I think the last was like 1918 or something like that. Hopefully Sharky's on the pier in Venice fares okay. A uh, really cool place if you've never been. Uh, if you're like me and you love flying, you could fly to Venice Airport if you wanted to and walk across the street to Sharky's on the pier. Or if you're poor like me and don't have that kind of funds, um, you can drive. <laughs> So we're going to continue to head out into the Gulf of Mexico. Drop down to altitude here. Just check out what the waves are looking like. towards the south, about 5,000 feet. So I think I'm just going to, you know, go up and down, up and down, check out the hurricane from some different altitudes as we fly there. Traveling at about 700 knots right now. Afterburners are on. Based on my estimates, it's going to take us about 20 to 25 minutes to get to the eye of the hurricane. I'll be curious to see what it looks like when I get there. It'll be sunny and calm, like you usually hear about with hurricanes. As you can see, I think I can see the uh, perimeter of the storm up ahead. It looks like there's rain and the cloud cover has increased exponentially. That looks like rain up ahead or just cloud cover. It's hard to tell at this point. Keep the plane here at full speed. Now, I thought about using the Dark Star for this, but I figure it might be a little too fast. I want to just enjoy the, uh, the ride. And the other thing I don't like about the Dark Star is it does not have a very nice cockpit. So if I wanted some cockpit views, it's not the greatest. So we're 207 nautical miles away from the estimated center of the storm, which is called the Eye.
a myth about hurricanes is that the eye is safe to go out in. It is not. Just because it's calm does not mean the conditions can change exponentially within a very short time frame. I remember in the uh, 2012, I think it was, when Hurricane uh, Irene came through New Jersey. Northern New Jersey was where I lived at the time, and I don't, really, I did not live anywhere near a beach. And you would go outside, and it would smell like salt water, because I'm assuming the storm picked up a ton of moisture from the ocean and just dumped it all inland, uh, which was pretty neat. It literally smelled like you were on the beach. Hurricane Sandy up October 29th to the 30th. It's going to die down a little bit here. We're 180 nautical miles away. Passing 3,000 feet, you can see the ocean, everything looks calm. I don't think the waves change much in Flight Simulator. I don't really ever pay much attention over them. Um, I don't usually fly this low either, or this fast. This is breaking a lot of flight rules. Let's see if we can get above these clouds. 10,000 feet. 13,000. 15. Speed starting to slow. I'm not going to bother to set the high altitude altimeter. Um, I'm okay. I kind of can visually see where I'm at when I get closer to the water. Anyway. You can see the sun poking through there, it looks like. Nothing to see but clouds and clouds. No rain right now, which is nice. Uh, definitely it's bumpy. The flaps are down a little bit because I'm going so slow. So I'm at 31,000 feet right now, and there's nothing but cloud cover. This is pretty much the max altitude for this particular fighter jet, it seems like. Going too slow here. I'm, yep, I'm not going to be able to get up anymore. So, I want to keep this flight going. So, let's go ahead here and get ready to dive back down, pick up some speed, and continue on our way to the eye of the hurricane. Not a lot going on here. Now, normally on a hurricane spotting flight, they'd be using a very specialized plane that flies into the storm and has a lot of sensors to measure wind, barometric pressures, all of those different things, visual inspection, stuff like that. You would not be using a fighter jet for something like this, nor would you be diving straight towards the ocean at 470 knots, 500 knots right now, with your afterburners on. in front here. We're 160 nautical miles away, so as you can see, we're getting there pretty quickly. And we are visual sight of the ocean. 7,000 feet. 
pretty calm right now, actually. Banking hard here. Only pulling 1G <coughs> right now. If you watch that G number when I do some of these banks and turns, it goes up pretty good. We're sitting at about 2,500 feet. Continuing along towards the eye of the storm. Now, I don't know if Flight Simulator is actually taking into account <coughs> super accurate real conditions why there's no rain. I would assume that given the size of the storm uh, and the, the strength based on the readings and stuff like that and the news casts about it that it would be pouring rain right now and thunder and lightning. I haven't seen much of any of that right now. So we can get a view of the sun up there. Can't really. So we're just continuing to keep our eye on the destination there and just varying my altitude to get different kind of experiences while I'm flying here. Hitting at about 665 knots. Mach 1.09. So we were going faster than the speed of sound. Thirty-three nautical miles to go. It's actually getting there faster than I thought. We're making really good time here, given the size of this storm. Back down along the water here and have some fun. We're at about four hundred feet right now. Now you do have to watch when you do things like this in this game. Uh, I've noticed on many occasions that. You would think that the sea level would be, altitude would be down closer to zero. It's not always the case. Sometimes it's like a thousand feet. Sometimes it varies. So you have to be very careful of that. Don't be surprised if I bump into the water once or twice here. Because it, it changes. Uh, I don't know exactly why that is. Oh, there's some lightning. Now we're picking up some storm effects. I heard some thunder, some lightning. Four hundred feet above sea level, and we're heading at six hundred and eighty-ish knots. There's some more lightning. Nice. So as we're getting deeper into the storm, it's definitely getting stronger, as you can see from the various things that are going on. I feel the plane wobbling around a little bit from the wind and my just speed. So we're continuing south still on a hundred and ninety-one degree heading. Burners are on. Still, we are just enjoying this leisurely flight through Hurricane Ian. Now, I'm not really sure if those bands that you see moving across the water is rain. Just That's just not being properly reflected, or it's clouds. I'm pretty sure it's just clouds. We're at, coming up on 100 nautical miles to go soon. Can't see a thing ahead of us. That is why I set the destination as the center of the eye. Now again, that's approximate. The storm is moving. Uh, so I don't need it to be perfect. I'm assuming when I get there that the eye is wide enough that even though the storm will have shifted, that I'm still going to see the eye. It's got It's a big area. So I'm not worried about that. If 
we come across any nice areas, uh, sometimes in these hurricanes, you come across like a patch that's just nice and you might be able to see up actually. Don't confuse that for the eye of the storm though, because it's not. Um, you might be able to bank up and see if we can get above some of these clouds, but I don't, again, I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. But we can try and have fun with it. Get up as high as we can go, hit some stall speeds, and then dive back down. Eighty-seven nautical miles to go. Making some great time here. I still expected to see more thunder and lightning, but I have not. down and earn below 1100 feet and kind of level off here. There's some lightning. I'd like to see some lightning bolts, but these aren't the right kind of clouds, I don't believe. If you watch closely on the wings and the uh, top of the plane, every time the lightning goes, you can see it. There it is. The lightning is really picking up. Now, really windy too. I'm getting knocked around here. I've got my hand on the flight stick the entire time. So you can see where it says custom arrival. That is the actual point that I set where it, you could, in theory, <laughs> it thinks you could land that. It doesn't know that it's the middle of the ocean. So that will be ignored. The custom arrival is shortly before the actual point that I set. Ah, oh, here we have a nice spot. Let's do some banking here. Ah, you can almost see through the clouds. Now again, don't be misunderstood. This is not the eye of the hurricane. This is just a gap in the cloud cover where it's quote unquote nicer. As you can see by the top, if you're in the eye of the storm, typically it's gonna look beautiful out. The sun will be out, the winds will be calmer. That is not the case. Continuing on here, we're 55 nautical miles to go. Let's see if we can bank up again here. Get some altitude. Right now it's calm and everything's hunky dory, so pull some G's here. Actually, I'm not pulling any G's. Try and climb up as high as I can here. And yeah, not getting very much higher than that. So we're at stall speeds. So we're going to go ahead here and simulate a stall. There's the sun. First time I've seen that this whole flight. So we are not making any altitude right now. As you can see, we are falling backwards, actually. All right, let's... Bring the engines are back to 100%. Got to recover from the stall here. There we go. Flaps are set. As you can see, they're automatically set because I'm flying 
with some assistance, obviously. Alright, back on track here. Got my nose pointed at the destination again. And let's continue on. So as you can see, that little gap in the cloud cover there was a brief point where we got some calm and had some fun and got to see the sun. So back on track after burners are on. And we are back continuing on our journey. 15,000 feet right now, 50 nautical miles away. I would expect to see the eye of the storm probably anywhere between 20 to 10 nautical miles from our destination, given what I was looking at on the maps there. So we should be almost there. There's some lightning. Thirty-five nautical miles away. As you can see, the wind is really whipping around here. That's not me doing that with the plane. It's literally bouncing back and forth. So the wind has really picked up considerably. But we're staying on course. <coughs> Some nice shots of the afterburners there. One problem when you record a video with this game, when you find the F-18, is the noise from the engine is so loud I have to turn down the volume on the flight simulator considerably during the final editing process. Otherwise, you won't be able to even hear me. <coughs> I'll be curious to see what Hurricane Ian does to Florida when it hits the west coast. There's some really nice areas there. Based on what it looks like from the storm, it's going to be more about uh, rain, torrential rain and flooding, than it is more so the wind damage. As you can see, the water level is off here. I'll show you, I just hit the ground at a thousand feet and hit the water. So as you can see, like I said, the water has shifted. Oh, look, we are at the eye of the storm. Oh, wow, look at this. It went from cloudy to just absolutely beautiful. Wow so peaceful. Let's go ahead and slow down here. Put the flaps down so we can enjoy the views. Keep my speed nice and low here. Not that I don't have plenty of room to turn. I'm going to get away from the storm a little bit um, and see the uh, what it looks like from behind. We'll turn around here. As you can see up ahead where the storm restarts again off in the distance there. So that's how big this eye is covers a considerable amount of nautical miles. So I set my thing pretty accurately. Let's go ahead and bring it around here slowly, taking the views. This is just absolutely beautiful. It's so calm and peaceful. But again, not to be misinterpreted as the storm's over. The eye of the storm is just the center. Look at that cloud front. 
Wow. That is awesome looking. I bet we'll see some lightning if we look close. We'll just look at the size of that storm. That is massive. Wow, that's really cool. Flight Simulator does a really good job of rendering stuff. I'm taking a screenshot of that. That is really cool. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video and enjoyed our flight through Hurricane Ian off the west coast of Florida. As always, if you could click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you enable notifications. I want to have more new and exciting flights coming soon. And as always, if there's anything anyone would like to see, just drop a comment on any one of my videos. I'm always checking them, and I will do my best to make that happen. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll see you all soon. Have a great day.